very detailed explanations using platonic logic and being an expert in field theory, which I most definitely am, into the nature of light in countless prior videos. That which we call light obviously doesn't exist. We're talking about waves, but waves are not a thing. Waves are what something does. We cannot speak about light itself. We only speak about illumination. We only speak about phenomena. The four Maxwellian field equations only define a field as far as a given vector with a resultant effect over a period of time. Maxwellian field equations, the four of them, never explain what a field is, nor has anything ever explained the light. Light certainly is not a particle. Now we have a coaxial pulse perturbation. What we actually have is a field perturbation at a given frequency, given wavelength. Um, H equals nu V, energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So the smaller the spatial component, the higher the energy. The actual higher the uh, frequency, the more powerful it gets, and also the, spatial per the smaller the spatial footprint the actual uh, light itself has. But light is only a concept, as so far as human understanding. We only know light by what it does, not by what it is, because light in and of itself, you know, where is light before you turn on the light bulb? Well, you know, we send an electrical charge through a coil. That excites, and it sends out photon. Really? There's no such thing as a photon. A photon is an arbitrary concept that has no basis in reality whatsoever. It is a misunderstanding of the nature of the coaxial circuit of light. Transverse electrical magnetic longitudinal pulse perturbations, which comprise and make up what we call illumination. But that's illumination. That's what light does. But that's not what light is. Light itself is purely a concept. If we actually remove what light does, then therefore light ceases to exist. If you can only define something uh, as phenomena in action, then that thing is merely conceptual and has no basis in reality by applying platonic and even Aristotelian logic to what light is. If we actually had an advanced race of beings like land and they started to read our science books, which of course are total BS, and they said, you humans are idiots. <laughs> uh, you know, as I've said before, um, Mother Nature, in a crude analogy, would be like a, uh, a, uh, a uh, hairy armpit chick walking around in like hemp sandals, right? Everything is pressure mediation. Everything is force, motion, inertia, and acceleration. The notion that the entire universe is comprised of like a bazillion different particles is an atomistic fallacy dreamt up by quantum mechanics and by relativity specifically. Now, let's take matter, for example. We think, well, there's protons, neutrons, and electrons, and then we have complex variations thereof that make up the countless elements in the periodic table. What if all of that were extremely simple and we used and applied Occam's razor, platonic logic, to the nature of matter itself? What if I were to tell you, and you have to make an intuitive leap and understand from the principle of what matter is, would it not be the case that there is only one fundamental particle? Okay, and all particles obviously are have a period of time, anything that actually has a birth, has a death, so nothing is permanent. There's no such thing as permanent matter, but we know for a fact that a free neutron, a neutron is an arbitrary concept, turns into a proton at roughly 14 minutes and 42 seconds, as has been observed many countless times. So a neutron is really a, ne a neutral charge proton, right? So there's really no such thing as a neutron. So we've eliminated out one particle. Nikola Tesla, um, uh, James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, Eric Dollard, and the finest minds of electrical engineering this Earth has ever seen all said one thing in uh, very close uh, similarity. Actually, they said the exact same thing. There's no such thing as a, a charge-carrying particle. The notion that there are countless trillions and zillions of like electrons flowing down the uh, power lines outside of the front of the back of your house is a perverse insanity. There's no such thing as a charge-carrying particle. That's like saying if you pull back a billion rubber bands and you snap them at something, which would be like transference of uh, charge, then you know those would be electrons. It's like, no, it's a pressure mediation. In this case, we're actually talking about field pressure mediation. We can call that electrical, but there's no such thing. There's actually no quantification for the notion that there is such a thing as an electron. This is an arbitrary concept. The actual electron microscope, for example, uh, used off of uh, 
its targets are all gold, so they're either metallic or if they're organic, they're gold sputtered, so they actually have a dielectric reflectivity when electrostatic, i.e. dielectric charge pulse, is actually put on them. That's actually how electron microscopes says. Because when you say there's no such thing as electrons, because Tesla, Heaviside, and the rest of them, I mean, these are the greats of electrical theory, so there's no such thing as a BS notion of a uh, charge-carrying particle. It's like, well, how does an electron microscope? It's like, well, it's very simple. Did you know how all targets in an electron microscope are uh, sampled or scanned? It's, if it's metallic, it doesn't, or, or if it's mineral, it uh, doesn't need to be sputter, gold sputter. But if it's like organic, like a bee, an insect, or you know something else like that, they're actually put in a gold sputter chamber, so they actually have a dielectric reflectivity. And that reflectance is actually measured, and that's how an electron microscope works. Except they're not being bombarded by particles we know as electrons. They're actually being bombarded by electrostatic charges. Um, so therefore, we have ultimately only, and I'm getting to the good part here, they have to make apply platonic logic and Occam's razor to the nature of the universe. We can certainly all agree that uh, all uh, elements on the periodic table are complex uh, compounded natures of the fundamental hydrogen particle. Now, if we actually take a look out at the, um, the most powerful entity in the universe, out at various galaxies, we'll actually take a look at it and go type in galactic jets. There are these reciprocating jets that are emitting literally trillions and trillions of tons, I don't know if it's per minute or per hour, trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen. Now, from the supposition of... Uh, and we can roll with that. And of course, the black hole is not black, nor is it actually a hole, but we'll just call it the entity of black hole right now. I've explained, explained that before. If we work off the fact that trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen is being emitted from nothing, i.e. the event horizon of nothing, and it's literally not nothing. It's where uh, literally dielectric acceleration overrides the spatial footprint for something to exist in this universe, which is why we stupid humans ignorantly call it black holes. We know that the highest energy source ever observed, i.e. these galactic uh, jets being emitted from the central parts of galaxies, are emitting trillions of tons of hydrogen. What can we actually draw as so far as applying, applying platonic logic and uh, the nuance of Occam's razor to the fundamental particle? Now we know the hydrogen particle, and we say one proton, one electron. Of course, there is no electron. It's just an electrostatic shell, like a balloon. So how are these particles being emitted? What are they actually? If we actually work off the paradigm, and uh, of course we have to define light, which would require like a dozen other videos, which I've already made, we apply the platonic paradigm to the highest energy source emitters. They're not emitting electromagnetism. They're not emitting radiation. Certainly some radiation, like alpha radiation, is uh, atomic by nature, i.e. helium nuclei, but what they're actually emitting is super high energy light. I thought you said it was emitting hydrogen. What's the difference? If we apply platonic logic to what is the electromagnetic spectrum, because there's no difference between visible light and gamma radiation, which will kill you in a heartbeat if enough, enough is dropped on you, infrared radiation, ultraviolet radio waves, all of that is only differentiated by frequency. H equals nu V, energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So if we have a high enough energy source, the pulse perturbation of the coaxial circuit actually gets compressed to the point where we actually have a quasi-stable. It's like, well, how long does a proton live? When we say quasi-stable, we mean relative to the age of the universe. We have a quasi-stable light particle. This will be the only particle there is. We know a neutron converts into a proton if it's emitted after 14 minutes and 42 seconds, we know that these uh, non-entities, non-entity countersinks of counter space at the centers of galaxies are emitting trillions of tons of hydrogen in galactic jets. Go Google that if you want. Look at the images. So what they're doing in their high energies are actually releasing super high energy light, like way, way, way above gamma radiation and power. It's undeniable that even the defunct branches of uh, the various branches of science will admit that even the proton particle itself contains an immense amount of energy if we're able to actually extract it. But, I mean, these are quasi-stable states. This is the quasi-stable state 
a matter. We have only one fundamental particle. The neutron is really a proton with a neutral charge in a certain configuration, harmonic configuration, in proximity to a proton. But a free neutron always turns into a proton. So really, we only have one fundamental particle. There's no such thing as a damn electron. Said Tesla, said Heaviside, said James Clerk Maxwell, far smarter than all of you combined when it comes to electrical field theory, including myself. So if you think you know more than them, then you're definitely an idiot and a moron. So we have one fundamental particle. We have light, and we have super high energy light, which is only being emitted from the most powerful source in the universe, which would be a galactic jet, which is emitting trillions of tons of hydrogen. Okay? And if we just remove the concept of the hydrogen atom, the notion of a proton and a spinning electron, we just say a single proton, fundamentally what hydrogen is, then we can actually say that the hydrogen particle, i.e. the proton, since that's all a hydrogen particle is. We're not talking about deuterium or tritium here. We're talking about fundamental elemental hydrogen, one proton. Is nothing other than super high energy light. So if we go way, 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 way far beyond gamma radiation, which is already incredibly powerful and will kill you, we go to something even more powerful where we have the coaxial pulse perturbation that we call light, but explaining light is rather difficult, and I've already done it through many, vid many videos you could look back. Then we have the hydrogen, the proton. We can say the hydrogen particle, the proton, the hydrogen particle, same thing. So, these galactic jets are emitting ultra high energy light, which we call the proton, the fundamental particle of the universe. Now, this sounds like something a hairy armpit chick wearing uh, hemp sandals with muddy feet and like nose hair probably. <laughs> you know, Mother Nature, the true Mother Nature, the true analogy of Mother Nature would be. So, when Nikola Tesla said the key to understanding the universe is a frequency and vibration, he didn't only mean electrical and light, he meant every damn thing, including matter. The fundamental building block of all matter, even modern defunct science and all its branches will admit, is a simple hydrogen atom. So if we know, therefore, that hydrogen is super high energy light, well above the spectrum of gamma, and we could actually say where it falls on that scale, however, I haven't done the math, given the energy properties of hydrogen relative to the energy properties of gamma, that it is probably some phi derivative above that of gamma radiation, that the fundamental particle of the building block of the entire universe is nothing other than a quasi-stable form of energy emission on the electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, the difference between visible light, gamma radiation, shortwave radiation, and the fundamental particle, i.e. the proton, is exactly all one and the same thing. And that is Occam's razor applied to universal cosmic mechanics in simplicity because as I've said and it's my motto that I created simplicity is divinity and there's absolutely nothing more simple more logical and more divine than what I have just told you it is impossible to get more simple than that thank you so much for watching if you like this video and click the link below all of this, by the way, in this video is my material. I did not take this material from some other source. It is mine. It belongs to me. I came up with it. Nobody else came up with it. If you're going to say, oh, I heard that somewhere else. No, you didn't. If you like this video, and click the link below. Make a small donation. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Hasta luego. Lux Everitas. Bye. Oh, forgot. I forgot to do this. There we go.